Hello folks, welcome to the Irish Whiskey Review with me, Marty McCauley. Uh, I hope I find you safe and well this evening, or this afternoon, or the, even in the morning. I don't know when you're doing it, when you're watching these, but uh, I, would ho I would hope, if you're watching whiskey reviews, leave it to the afternoon, maybe even the evening, you know. Drink responsibly, kids. Stay safe out there. Covid hasn't gone away, you know. So, uh, tonight, we are... <gasps> my local distillery I'm very close this is a limited edition Acacia Wood Finished Bush Mills now it's a general Bush Mills claims to be the oldest distillery in the world There's lots of debate about this, and if you contrive and say possibly it might be, maybe they have a they have a license from King James the First to a man called Thomas Phillips to say he can distill whiskey, he can make aquavitae, make whiskey in the townland of Bushmills, which is a little pocket, a little area. Now there's been distilling going on there for an awful long time, for a long, long time before sixteen oh eight. But they, Bushmills, have the first authenticated actual whiskey license in the world. And I'll I'll say to them, fair enough, yeah, that'll do. That'll do for me. If they have it, then that's that's okay. Now the distinctive square bottles of Bushmills. Just set that out of the way. Bushmills make single malt. Triple distilled, unpeated, single malt whiskey. You have to remember, they are on the North Antrim coast, my home county, the closest distillery to me. They have a real, um, a real place in my heart. I, I love it, and it's the only whiskey in, whiskey distillery in the world that appears on banknotes, folks. Bank of Ireland banknotes. The distillery's on it. There it is. Now you have to remember how close they are to Scotland. Uh, I live along the coast road as well. And I stand in Ireland and I look across and I'm closer to Scotland than I am to Belfast. So uh, I see it pretty much, I see it from my front garden. Uh, quite. I actually look across and I can see Isla and the Paps of Jura from my, from my front door. So you have to remember how close these are because it's, it's quite important uh, this province that we are in, in Ireland, is, is Ulster. And Ulster and Scotland have a very close relationship all the way through history. They're very, very closely tied. Now, this art of triple distillation and whiskey, it comes from here, okay? End of, end of debate, we're not discussing this. It come from here, went to Scotland, but then it came back again and to and fro and to and fro. The single malt aspect, Bushmills have always done this kind of thing. This has always been part and parcel of what they do. And extremely well they do it. Now they're planning on doubling their production, doubling the size of the, the distillery because they're selling so much of it. Um, I personally believe they should be selling more and more and more. I, pers I personally believe and think that Bushmills is still a bit of a sleeping giant in the US and other markets the newer markets where it's going to be China India this kind of thing once people appreciate the quality that Bushmills have and can do I think they'll start to rock it I think they'll start to see certain collectors looking for older cask strength single casks this kind of stuff that, that at the minute in the collector's market a little bit subdued they're, they're, they lag fairly well behind the likes of the, the Middletons and so on and so forth I think Bush Mills once people really get to appreciate the quality of what it is further afield they, they do sell across in all these markets but they're kind of dwarfed a little bit 
by Irish distillers by, by Jameson. Jameson's kind of the trendy one that's, that's got there. But as people become a bit more educated in their in their palates and begin to appreciate maybe the brown spirit market more and more and more in the Irish whiskey market, the Irish whiskey brand, Bushmills, I think, is going to start to build bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So this is a little bit unfortunate for me and I don't mean I'm not talking about the taste this is a 46% uh, non-chill filtered for, sorry 47% I thought it was 46 it's 47% non-chill filtered limited edition that's only available at the distillery personally I think this was a mistake this should have been put out across wider markets there's probably a marketing reason or some reason why they did this they get lots of tourists down there um but there's still some of this available to buy down at the distillery now it's 75 pounds a bottle which really for the quality for the quality of it and maybe giving a little bit of the review away here by saying this for the quality of it it's really not it's not often priced in any way shape or form um, the forty-seven percent for a start. I mean, you have to appreciate the tax on these kind of things. It is kind of ridiculous that at the distillery itself, you they have to charge so much. And sometimes other places where the taxes are a lot lower, they can actually buy the whiskey cheaper in I don't know, Maryland in America than they can buy it at the distillery. It's to me, it seems ridiculous, but it's nonetheless what's happened. Now, the color. Bit of colour in there, I think. A little bit, a little bit orangey, but it's not too bad. Uh, I'm just having a little bit of a read, just to see. Um, this aromatic single malt is matured in casks of charred bourbon and toasted sherry, then carefully aged in acacia wood. Now, this is the first Irish whiskey to be aged in acacia wood. Um, acacia, big African uh, wood, etc. etc. There has, I think, there's been a few other uh, experimental bottlings other places, but this is the first Irish one. I have accused Bushmills in the past of being a little, a little boring. If I'm totally honest, they have a core range and it's really good, mostly. But where every, everybody else is releasing single casks and you know experimental cask finishes and so on and so forth, the Irish whiskey market's not very. I mean, we think it's quite big, but it's not really in comparison to certainly the other uh, countries. I mean, just across water, Scotland is much, much, much bigger. I review, when I reviewed Bushmills Twenty One, I think it's fabulous, but. At 160 70 pounds and it should be i mean it should be if it's one of your stable uh, core brands and it's that price well it kind of has to be good but it's a little boring so i want them to make things exciting i want them to make new cask finishes new punchier different things make it a bit more exciting I, uh, the bushmill 16 exceptional exceptional Bushmills 21, very, very, very good, but a little boring. And I compare that to, I, I, I said in a written review that I did, that it was a bit like a girlfriend your mother would pick for you. She'll take all the boxes, oh, she's good looking, she's, she, she's uh, comes with good job prospects and all that kind of thing. Well, it's not necessarily what you're wanting, you know. So, what does this do? straight away you're getting lots of the the what bushmills is famous for that that triple distilled that clean the the the, the cake finish type it's almost like a baked goods um like, like, a, like there's almost like a fresh bakery thing going on but you're getting lots of fruit the the, the there's cherry there 
complex fruits, dark fruits, baked fruits, some dried fruit. Very clean wood, very almost polished wood. It's totally different. This is not like something you've had before. There's, there's a difference here. There's something, there's a sweet note coming through that you're not, hmm, where did that come from? It's not a typical whiskey note. It's not something that you've really had a lot before. And it's puzzling. It, it, it gets you. you hmm, what, what, what's going on here? Again, it's all it's those sort of pitted fruits, you know, the, the, the fruits with stones in them. It's got a lovely nose to it. It's got a really nice, warm. This is not a this is not a summer's day whiskey. This is this is an autumnal whiskey. This is one you drink. The nights are drawing in. The temperatures dropped a little bit. It's nearly time to light the fire over here in Ireland. You know, get the peat on the fire. It's that kind of thing. It's one that you're going to sit down. You come home from work. You know, you, you, you make your dinner or your, your, your partner makes your dinner or whatever. You sit down, you think, well, just want to unwind. That's kind of what I want to do. The fire's on, the dogs and I am sleeping. The, we'll, we'll stick on, stick something on on the TV. And uh, currently I'm watching Cobra Kai on Netflix. Can I just say, it's fabulous. It's one of the best TV shows I've ever seen. It's hilariously funny. Well liked it. It's silly in places. It's super. Oh, fabulous, fabulous. Anyway, getting back to the whiskey. But it's that kind of thing. You can sit down, have a discussion with your partner, your girlfriend, your you know your boyfriend, your wife, whatever. And you sit and have a chat and talk and go. Yeah, I almost forget you're drinking this whiskey. It's that. Kind, it's got that kind of vibe to it where. It's relaxing. You just ah yeah, I can chat away. Just take a little drink and chat away, and you know you feel comfortable. You feel lovely. It's like a nice pair of slippers, but it's got these exciting different notes to it. So you, it's something totally new that you, you're not sure about, and it's exciting. I like it. I love. I love it. I, there's a there's a chocolate note coming through on it, and it's it's a nice quality milk chocolate note on it. Not. The dark chocolate that you sometimes get with with uh, some sherry casks. Yeah, I, I, mm. yeah. Toffee, honeycomb, a game with pet of fruits. There on the finish, these lovely woody notes. Complex woody notes, different woody notes. It's coming through. There's buttered toast there. There's yeah. There's there's actually a, 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 there's a slight floral note there, which is quite surprising that you get that that lifts it and that's it. The finish is still going on here. This is excellent. I I really really like this. Uh, I've, I reviewed it when it first came out and I, I liked it then, I like it more now. Um, I think Bushmills should be doing much more of this stuff. Everyone knows this is a <laughs> the worst kept secret in the world. The worst kept secret in Irish whiskey, which is pretty much my world. Uh, the worst kept secret in Irish whiskey is that Bushmills have the best ageing stock in Ireland. And I think pretty much everybody agrees on this other than the, the other brands. They have so much potential to bring out so many good quality whiskies. And I just wish they would hurry up and do it. Uh, I think they've missed the mark a little bit in certain things that they've done in the past while. Uh, but this more of this kind of thing, drive it forward, get new exciting cask finishes. This... This makes a perfect, perfect Christmas gift for the whiskey drinker in your life. If you can get a bottle of this, get this. It's perfect for a whiskey drinker for Christmas. You'll have to travel to the distillery, which is unfortunate. Um, <laughs> but if you know anybody down there, give them a ring. Say, can you buy one? Get it sent over. 
Um, I'll give this a 9 out of 10. Um, I, I'm a huge fan of Black Bush, and there's elements of that Black Bush in this. The, all the good stuff from Black Bush is there, um, but charged and more, there's more to it. Again, at the price point, it's really it's value for money. Um, easily accessible for, for people who live around here. Um, I think Bushmills are on the cusp in a few years time of really, really good things. Um, that, that, that we'll see it just soar. And what you'll see is prices on the secondary market for this bottling and some others really, really catch fire. Uh, I'm going to have another wee drop. I, I should put water in this. In fact, I will. Put another little drop of water in it. I'll say another, I haven't got anything to start with. As soon as it goes in, you see the water and the oils and the water. It's a, a nice viscous. It's that quality mouth feel. Hmm. Give it a little, a little swish. Sweet. Oh, sweet. There's almost a marshmallow note there now. It's, it's actually sweetened up even further. And again, there's that cherry. There's 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 some more autumnal fruits. That there's uh, blackcurrant, black blackberries. There's a raspberry note coming through. A little bit more of a summery fruit, but but it's it's lots of fruit. Um, and rounded and balanced with with wood a slight slight cut grass note very very fresh note yeah there's layers layers there that go through and, uh, and there's different things things you can work with again Lovely, nice balance to it. It's not, it's not sharp. Um, it's got that. It's got a lovely mouthfeel. Luxurious. There's chocolate there. The night, nice, uh, balanced. Really ri nice, rich, good quality milk chocolate. Petted fruits. Lovely, uh, lovely. Um, honestly. There's going to be great things coming from fish mills in the not too distant future i'm certain sure of this uh, so with that highly rated uh, get yourself down and get yourself a bottle so stay safe folks uh, look after each other look after everybody around you as well wear a face mask with the covid about wear a face mask it doesn't take too long this is you're not remember you're not wearing a face mask for for you you're wearing it for other people so take care everybody and uh, stay safe